So today we're going to paint a bunny and I'm happy you're here with us. Uh, we're going to do, first of all, we start with a little bit of uh, photo research. I uploaded some pictures of bunnies and some of them have the name where they came from and some don't. But since we're not selling these paintings, we can use these as a photo reference. If you wanted to sell it or you wanted to do something more with it, then you are, feel free to contact the photographer. Um, bunnies, as you know, have all sorts of different shapes and sizes and directions and movement. So I pulled this photo up because I wanna just kind of study each separate movement. When you're looking at what you wanna paint, your object that you wanna paint, just notice different things about body position maybe the movement that the bunny is in and maybe the head placement and how the neck is showing or if it's tucked away, you may want to paint something that is showing some movement and excitement. Look at this one. Isn't he cute? The bunny's hopping over the other bunny. This is a favorite. I, I do like to include the skeleton when you're doing your own research do in take a look at the animal that you are painting. Sorry, I'm trying to drag this one up a little bit. Um, excuse me, come on, let me get it up there. Nope. I, I like to include this skeleton of the animal. You might find if you just look up uh, animal skeleton, you will see, there he is. You will see, just notice the legs, the bending of the legs, where the, the tail First of all, I did not know that their bunny tail has the skeleton all the way to the end of the tail. I always thought it was just a little ball, didn't you? So doing a little studying and researching their ribs, the neck, the uh, vertebrae in the neck, actually the skull shape, that's obviously what makes the bunny his own look. The way his paws bend, the elbows go back and they're like a bird they go back they're not like our knees when your legs our knees go down the elbows and the arm they go back so that's something to think about and uh, i don't want to i have oodles of pictures here set up but mainly let me show you the one that we're going to paint this one i just want you to see it's beautiful it's a popular photo you can include a flower or put a flower crown what I loved about this painting was you could just see the whole back of his spine. Now that we saw the spine, you can just see the movement in his body. Look at the head direction. Look at his ears and where they uh, are located on the um, on the um, yeah, on his head. So let me show you this paint this picture. Uh, I'm going to show you the drawing and. Before I go further, make sure you get your paints wet. Squirt them, squirt them. I was talking with some of the um, uh, friend, my artist friends, and one of the things that they had struggles with with watercolor was they didn't know the watercolor, the paint, and how wet it should be. So I always start my lessons, get it wet, and then while we're doing our research, while we're going on, we can then, it will be ready for you. So we're going back. I'm looking at, uh, sorry, got a little tricky here with the, with the bunny. This bunny we're talking about, I can move, make him big. Look at the shape. He is sitting. He's facing a different direction. Sometimes people like different directions. They like to paint their bunnies in a different direction, but notice the head and then his furry furry chest and the way the elbow bends backwards on that bunny and the way his leg has the big round part of his hip and then his foot comes down and his paw comes forward and then notice a little bit of a tail we know that it has the bones so that's our study and now i'm going to pull up the one that we are going to paint today i did some drawings uh, I like to, when it, before I first draw, I like to just lightly sketch out with a pencil, lightly sketch out the details that I found and then connect them. So we know a bunny's head has this kind of a, a squared off top, but his jaw comes forward. Um, let's pull up this picture of this bunny again and have him 
small so you can see him. And this isn't the one I was going to paint today, but please feel free to snap a picture. Or if you watch this video again later, um, my bunny's facing another way. I did a little practice ahead, but I have his head, then his body, his arm, shoulder, his tail, or uh, sorry, his hind legs comes down and then the tail. So you just rough it in with your circles. Notice how the ears, this is one thing about bunnies that I think is really fun, is watch their ears. Notice how the front of his ear here, the back of the ear, and I'm gonna just put the arrow here, that's his hearing. So this bunny is listening to something behind him. But for example, if you're looking at this bunny, look at his ears they are listening to something right where we are standing so maybe the person taking the picture said something and his ear rotated towards towards us so when you're painting i want you to just think about what direction is this bunny facing what's happening in the story where is he and the one i want to paint today is this one look how cute he is we love these bunnies i have a friend this could be her bunny I have a friend who has this type of bunny and uh, let me get rid of these. And this bunny, look at how adorable it is. Look at the movement you can get. So we're gonna just lightly sketch it first. We did our research. Now we're gonna sketch, we're gonna place him on the paper. Look at him on the whole page that you see and just lightly sketch his head. And then I place like the foot and this one foot is lifted a little bit. That's kind of cute where you see the paw. I'm lightly, lightly sketching it. This is a, a 9B pencil. I really use a two soft lead HB, two HB. A 9B will give you a little more ink. Look how this paw is kind of facing us. And I'm gonna come back, his big body, the I'm going to do that circle there, but I can erase that before I paint. I, I like you to try to draw it on your scratch paper first and then onto your paper because a lot of eraser marks mars up your paper. But this is kind of cute. Look at he has his paw in the back showing here. Now the head shape, remember that, that the eye is, I'm going to zoom in on that eye real quick just to give you a little feed, feedback there. We're seeing the side of his eye. When we look at us, the eyes are facing us. And in this particular bunny, this, the, the eyes are on the side of the head. So you wanna make sure that you have your eyes facing the side. And it's just a simple half circle here. And then the fur coming around. And then he's got big, 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 big cheeks. Big, 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 big cheeks, how cute. And you may try this again later and pull up a picture on your computer. I would love to see it. Please include it. I'm going to pull this one in, put that eye in. And then it's got a little bit of a... Laura and Mary Lou, what would you say that shape of that top of his head is? Mm. What do you call that? You know, it's just kind of a little flat, right? It's a little, a little curved to it, but it's kind of, what do you call it when a square is off like that? Quadrilateral or something? Oh my gosh, you're really... <laughs> yes, very intelligent. All right, quadrilateral. I don't know. Lateral. Um, I'm using a Moo eraser. I might have told you about this before. It's a Moo eraser. It's um, Marie's... Um, it's a Chinese eraser. Love it. This one says 8B on it. Um, Cindy Hamilton turned me on to this. I love it because you it just easily erases off your paper. Um, I'm seeing a little tilt. Every time I look up at the painting, I see something different at the picture. So I didn't see it at first, but now I see it again. I see this cute little tilt of his head. His head is tilted. So the eyes are a little bit on an offset like that. And his nose and mouth is going to be a little offset. And it probably goes along with his paw being raised off the, off the ground. He's probably lifting his paw and maybe going to say something. I'm not sure. You can make it 
whatever story you want to tell. Last but not least, those fabulous ears. Love them. Notice where it comes out from the eye. It's behind the eye, behind the cheek. It's a little bit separated from the body. And it comes up to the just above the eye. It's connected. I love this. So cute. And this one is also, I can tell I drew my body too big because his ear is really coming out and down and flips a little bit. And then comes back up and right up to where, like behind the eye, the eye socket is. So I'm going to erase this line or I'm just gonna let the ear be in front of his body because I really wanted a little bigger body or his chest. And I don't I don't believe his back his back leg comes after. So don't worry if you don't have it perfect. It's just really for fun. We're just giving ourselves a little skeleton because we know that the watercoloring part is the most fun. And I'm going to, um, anybody, you want to show your picture you're drawing or? Oh, wow. Both of you. Yes. I love it. And you got the tilt of the head. That's really great. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what's happening here, but. All right, so let's get our colors out. Do you want to talk a little bit about the colors? Talk a little bit about what you're, uh, what you would choose. I like to put my colors down here on the bottom, and I'm going to um, open up my Facebook again. It closed up on me. I want to make sure I see everybody who's joining us. I think Emily said she would be here today. She is. Oh, she is? Okay, good. You can see for me. That'd be awesome. I mm -hmm. have a hard time seeing. Yay, Emily. Hello. And I honestly, if you do not want to be called out, don't worry. I won't. If you ask me not to, I'm happy not to. I just, um, sometimes some people like it and some don't. All right. Did we pick colors yet? We're just starting to. I think it looks like a yellow ochre. Okay. Let's but put it. Maybe, maybe a little brown mixed in there. Ooh, yellow ochre. Let's put yellow ochre down as our as a choice. And um, I'm gonna dirty water. Make sure you have your paper towel with you. It is nice to put your eraser off to the side. You might decide you want to use it, but I found if you erase when your pen when your painting is wet, it will smudge. And of course, this is practice, so it's all right. But we. We'd like to avoid that smudging. Okay. Yeah. I'm not able to see it. Laura, do you see it? What? Uh, see our friends? I can only see that Emily is here. Okay, she, good. She put her camera on for a minute and waved. <laughs> oh, that a girl. Thank you, Emily. Okay, good. Yeah, other right. than that, I can't tell you. Okay. So what about um, another color? Mary Lou, any colors you think you see? I like, like quinacrid and gold. That's a good one. Okay, quinacridone gold. If you don't have these colors, you use what you think is close to it. If you want me to give you a color list, it'll be on um, YouTube. You'll be able to see the color list. Conacridum gold is something, it's one of the ones. Hi, Pat. Glad you're here, Pat. Thank you. Conacridum gold is one that you may want to purchase. Um, Laura was right when she said yellow ochre, conacridum gold. Do we see something that's a little more, excuse me, a little more orange? And maybe it's not orange. Maybe he's a rusty color. Let's see, I'm looking in the comments. Anybody have any comments about what color you might think? Yeah, feel free to, to pop in. And Laura, if you see it, that's good. I'm having a hard time seeing. Okay. So, okay, so how, how could we make this a little bit more? Is it an orange? Is it a rusty? What I would do is grab my burnt sienna and put that on there. 
And then the other color is to grab an orange and put it on, on your paper. And then you can kind of compare and see what those colors do for you. I believe it's a mixture of this orange and this sienna and then a connect quinacridone gold on top of that in there. I think that's so pretty. So using all three of those colors and then have your yellow ochre ready. I love that. All right, let's do it. Let's go. We do know that bunnies have a little bit of a pink inside their nose, inside their mouth. So if you wanted to take a rose matter or any kind of pink and just place the mouth and the nose in there so that you have have your looks kind of goofy right now but we're going to blend it in in a minute and it'll just be my placeholder there's a white in the body so those are that's the part we want to leave and we know that when we paint white we're going to use i don't know any color you have that this bunny i think you wouldn't use a gray although it is you think of a shadow as being a gray i'm going to use a little bit of a blue but really watered down and i know that this leg behind i'm just dropping it in and it's wet on dry i don't want to leave that white paper i'm just going to drop it in it is mixing in with my um, pencil line feel free to leave your pencil line if you want I'm going to add a little more blue to this front paw because it's such a big paw and I did not draw it that big. Maybe I'll outline it after because I do want that big paw. I love how big his front, his foot, the um, behind foot is on both sides. Okay, just dragging that gray up there. If you have, a, it's a blue gray. If you have another color you're using, please feel free to do it, to use it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use that same color and negative paint against his mouth right where it's light here and then it comes down to his chest go ahead and just paint that in it doesn't look like much but it's there it's wet and it's there it's holding the place even around the eyes a little bit of this gray blue it's white but because we don't use white paint and watercolor you can there is a chinese white that's used but it's best if you could try to do it without i use that white as my last ditch effort okay there we go so now I want to the ears to be soft and fuzzy so I'm gonna get them wet and maybe a little bit of that forehead get it a little wet so that they flow and pick this color that I made this little mixture down here and drop it in now if you take your time and you're not wet on wet you will have a chance to make some of the shadows like right in by his eye is darker than the edge the outer edge so we're just going to go ahead and put this drop this color in and let it move because it's wet and wet anybody have an idea of what you would want to add to that to make it a little darker for the shadowing part behind his eye Could you use the, the blue in in those um in these yellow this mix just to make it darker or no? Um yeah, okay. <clears throat> For the dark part of the orange? Yeah. Absolutely. And why did you say blue? Excellent. Um I guess from practice, it's the opposite. It is. It's the opposite of orange on the color wheel. Usually will make it dark, but be careful because orange is two colors mixed together. It's two primary colors mixed together. So if you're adding a third color, it makes it more brown. So be careful. But if you'd like a little bit of a shadow, just add a little bit, teeny bit, and tap it. Tap it in there. Let it just bleed out. Tap that in there for your shadow. That's well done. And, and it does look kind of brown. So that worked out really well, Laura. Good one. Um, I know his body here is also a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and use that dark mixture and just drop it in. And really light and easy, loose and fast. Sometimes we spend a lot of time on our paintings and we really just watercolor what's so magical is if it's loose and fast. You can always go back in when it's dry and dig in and do a little more. 
detail, but for right now, we're just loose and fast. This is a quick little bunny, a little 30 minute quick lesson. Again, if you can't catch it live with me or paint with me, but you're here, don't worry. You can go to um, Facebook and it will be uploaded tomorrow. I have Junie, he will upload it for us tomorrow. Now I see I painted his foot a little too blue. Oh my gosh, isn't he cute? Sometimes if you just take a minute and look away, they just, it looks so cute. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. Uh, I painted that foot a little too blue. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. So what I need to do is, I'm gonna move this over. I have a paintbrush dock, it's on my website. If you need a dock for your paintbrushes, Holly's dad made them for me, Terry, if you're here, your hubby made them. Um, it helps with your brushes not falling all over the place. Here we go, his foot, see where it's blue and you can see where this is blue. It's not wrong, but it's, I'm not crazy about it being so blue. So I'm just going to get my wet brush, dry off it with the paper towel and scoop it up a little bit and then set it down, set the paper towel down right on it. I might've mentioned in the past, if you use a paper towel, you might get a pattern. If you don't want that, you can use toilet paper. Sometimes I like the pattern, sometimes I don't. Okay, I need to dig in now and get a little more oomph for this little guy. He's really cute. He's really cute. I want his nose to, I see a little, I'm gonna do it with water first to practice, but I see a little bend in his nose right up here and it's a little darker color. So I'm doing it in just a, that light, wet brush. And then I'm gonna grab that color that we uh, have been using here. And I'm, I'd like to just tap it in and see what happens. Just a, four little taps right there. And then help it, encourage it, move in the water and scoop it up. Draw the upward strokes. I'm gonna just encourage it to, I'm telling it where to go. I'm scooping it up. I see a little bit right above his eye. So I'm just tapping really teeny tap, tap, tap. It's still moist, so some of it's moving. If you're having trouble with this control part, it might be just too much water, but never fear. Just take your paper towel, lay it on top, dry it off, and then start again. Um, now it does dry lighter than when you first apply it. I can see right here behind his eye, it's, it dried lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more dark. Uh, I'm going kind of fast just for the sake of staying within the half hour because I promised you all we would be in a half hour. But if it's too fast, let me know. All right. I'm taking some, I love the little white around his little, his little whiskers the whisker area. So we, we know that his body is light in some spaces here. And then there's a nice little, well, it's just a nice little sienna. I think that's what you said, Pat, you're using sienna, but watered down, burnt sienna, perfect. Um, I love how burnt sienna and cronacridone gold mix together really well too. They have a little glow to them. You can see how I'm just tapping it in on the darker spots where it's glowing, but he has a little bib. And what I like about that bib is it will let me negative paint the white part under his, under his chin. And, it, and again, my pencil line is showing, otherwise that would normally be white, which is fine. I didn't want to erase it. Your, if yours is, don't worry. Next time you draw it, maybe paint it. Next time you paint it, maybe paint do less drawing. Oh my goodness, look how exciting. I just had an accident. I reached in my, let me get rid of that. I reached in here and I felt I had some of that pink from the nose and I added it into the Cronacridone Sienna mix. Look how fun that color is for a dark spark part on his face. Maybe I'll put a little on this side too and it does tie it all together. Oh yeah, I can use that same color. Who would have thought? I did not plan that ahead. Those are those happy, happy accidents. And I do believe in, <laughs> I believe in um, uh, Bob Ross. I, he is absolutely right. 
happy accidents. Those are the, it's the best way to learn. And it's happy because you don't have a teacher standing on top of you telling you you're wrong. You're not wrong. You're learning. That's what's so fun about this. Now I'm just going in and just adding detail, adding detail about that color. Is that cinnamon? Would you say he's cinnamon? Mm, I don't know. A little lighter than cinnamon. Yeah. What is it? Like a... Yeah, I'm, I am I want that haunch here, the back leg, so I'm just tapping it in, letting it just... If you see that you have some hard marks on there, some people like them, some don't. That's perfectly up to you, but the wh why that happened was because it was dry when I added the next layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just take... If I'm going to assume, let's say we don't like it, I'm just going to take a tip with a little damp brush and just tap out the edges here. Now I left the eye last. Everybody has their own preference. I find you can have put it in already or me, it's just like the icing on the cake. It's the last thing. And then he'll be, he'll have his life. I'm going to go right under. He'll look alive. Right under there is a little darker and just it's tweaking and playing. I can't wait to see your bunnies. Please, please, please include them in here so I can see them. I love when you add them to the, all you have to do, we talked about this last time, is take a picture of your bunny. I'm gonna do his eye now. I'm gonna use more of a pasty consistency because I want it to stay, I don't want it to bleed. Anyway, take a picture of your bunny and, and then upload it in the comments. Yeah, that got a little um, bleed, so I'm going to go ahead and smash it out with the paper, lift, smash it out with the paper, lift, and playing a little bit. The bunny nose play a little bit. I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to see what you painted. I'm going to soften up those nostril noses that I put in at the beginning. Now, if you want to put a background, that also underneath him should be a little darker shadow. I gotta put his eye in again now because it was wet. So tip of my brush, use the belly of the brush when you're painting the body and then just tilt your brush straight up and down and use the tip when you want to put that eye in. And I'm putting that little bit of a curve because I know it curves. Think of like a marble and that you're looking at a slice of the marble. His head's tilted, so his eyes are not going to be in line. But when you're painting animals, when you are painting animals, the eyes are in line with the nose, with the nostrils. So I need to make sure that my nostrils are also slanted like his and his mouth. And sometimes if you want to exaggerate it, you can make the eyes a little bit bigger. Really make our bunny look at us. Oh, he reminds me of, oh, I can't think of that TV show that the kids all used to watch. Oh, his eye looks really goofy, doesn't it? I got him like, whoa, I can't even want this. Let's see, what can I do to fix that? Maybe bring it in a little. I'm not gonna worry and be upset and frustrated because I can always paint him again, but he is kind of cute. Maybe I'll go with the skinny brush. Maybe, maybe. Pat, do you have any ideas? I'm gonna grab some really dark, dark we, Judy Morris Black. If you want to know what that is, text me. I'm going to give him and make it a her. I'm going to give her some eyelashes. <laughs> and then you don't really even notice that the eyes are kind of goofy. There we go. And I'm going to put some paws in. And what whatever you want to do, it's your bunny. Uh, I could love to see a little more detail now that I'm looking back at it. I'm going to go a little deeper in here now. Get that shadow there. 
some fur here. You can actually paint the straight up and down little lines if you wanted to really accentuate the fur, or you can let it bleed like this. You, you have the choice. I do think his knee is a little bit too high here. Just kind of using the belly brush, scooching water around. And what is the opposite color, Laura, that we said? Blue. Orange, How pretty blue. would that be? How pretty if I took some blue, put some blue water, just plain water, excuse me, plain water back here, and added some blue. How pretty is that? My water got is kind of dirty because of the um, black that I used for his eyes. So I'll rinse my brush off, dirty, clean water. Let's just add some more, a different blue. But look how it just bleeds and it complements the bunny. I will be sure to take a picture of this and put it in the comments. If you guys promise to put yours in the comments, I might want to pick another blue. Let's see. Oh, let's try to see what happens. Let's experiment. I'd like to lift this up a little bit so you get a little angle. Not the light. Um, okay, let's experiment. If I put blue and it's more dry. I put it on wet there and I put a different blue and it's on dry. And if you don't like it, just grab a little bit of water in your brush and grab the ends of the edges of that blue you just put down and just push it. It's that push-pull that we learned in the Foundations watercolor class. Just a few tricks, just push and pull, and there you go. I When I add one color to this side, I like to add it to the other to balance it out. Uh, you may have used green. That is also a beautiful color. He might have been in the grass. And this will be up all day. It'll be up actually forever, but it's hard to find things on Facebook later. So please feel free to go to uh, YouTube, Art Yourself Studio on YouTube, and you'll be able to find it. Ah, Payne's Gray. That's a perfect color. Payne's Gray would be great for his eyes. Yes. And because I talked about green, I'm going to do green underneath. I'm going to give him sitting in grass. So I'm adding water and just grab some green. Any green. I love Daniel Smith colors. Play with them. They have those dot cards. If you want to know about that, I can just text me and I'll put it in the link. And there you go. Quick, simple. I'm not going to say easy because it could be frustrating and hard for some and that's okay but make it simple on yourself. Just play, have fun. Yeah, his eye is really <laughs> goofy, but I'm not, again, I'm not gonna like point that out when I show it to somebody. If I point it out, then you're gonna see it, right? If I don't point it out, you won't really see it. Let's grab some of that Payne's Gray. Anybody, do you guys wanna show yours? Or do you need another minute? Still working, but here he is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, oh. look, hang on. Emily. Emily can't talk. I don't know if you guys can see her. Oh, my gosh, Emily. Oh, that's you. beautiful. I don't know if she shows up. Does she show up, Laura? If she's yes, out? Emily's showing up. She yes. just doesn't. Oh. She's muted. Okay, good. Oh, Emily, I love it. I love it. He's so cute. Good job. Okay, Laura. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And you did that in your workbook, not your show off book. Oh, definitely in okay. my workbook first. <laughs> well, that's why it's a little bit like, um, but it's really cute. Yeah, the, awesome. the paint doesn't take real well on the multimedia paper. Yeah. But, but that's okay. your practice. So mm -hmm. let's see, Mary Lou, did you did, were you able to keep up or did you take a break? Yep. Yeah, I know that you will probably do it again and do it later. I know sometimes when you're painting in a class, it's hard to get your mojo going, but definitely do it on your own and show it to us in our, because your paintings always come out so beautiful. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Happy you, Janine. Here. 
And um, yeah, it's, we'll see. Oh, guess what we're going to do next week? A crab. A really pretty crab with lots of splashes and lots of color. All right. So I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye, Danny. Thank you.